We're gonna talk about the six reasons not to move to Austin, Texas. mentioned, we are going to talk about the top six reasons not to move to Austin, Texas. As a local and a realtor, I'm constantly hearing about why people love Austin and why people are relocating here. But I think it's important to go over like the not so super duper fun facts and the reality of it and why people don't like Austin. Make sure to watch this video all the way to the end because the last point that I have for you is I think pretty serious and something that people just don't talk about. And I wanna make sure to be as real with you as possible always. So watch till the end. First reason not to move to Austin is our traffic. Now compared to California or New York or like, I don't know, Mexico, our traffic isn't as bad, but we do have a lot and it continues to grow. Sometimes rush hour starts as early as like 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon and it'll go to like 7 or 8 o'clock at night. Not only is there a lot of traffic, but I feel like people here drive like <laughs> I said that, I, I mean, now you know. Now you know the truth. I don't personally show houses that much anymore, but when I was showing homes earlier on in my career, I would meet with like three or four clients a day sometimes, and I would put up to 100 miles a day on my car. And within that 100 mile range, I feel like I would easily and consistently avoid about three accidents per day because people would just like cut people off or they, like, they tailgate. Like you'll be going literally 90 miles an hour on the highway and somebody will be on your tail. What? Also, I think generally in Austin, like people don't tend to be really good technical drivers. Not saying I'm the best driver, I'm very aggressive, but like, at least I'm like, I'm okay at being aggressive. I grew up learning to drive in the Midwest on snow and ice. When I go back to the Midwest, to Minnesota, where, where my mom lives, people are a lot more cautious, they're a lot more polite because weather can make driving really hazardous. And generally speaking, we don't have ice on the road. So people don't have to be super careful when they're braking or have to like think ahead of time of how, you know, one little driving decision can affect literally an entire row of cars. I remember one time I was turning onto a residential road. I guess I would say it was like the main road to this neighborhood. And there was like this long line of cars waiting to get in because there had been an accident. If I'm being completely honest, it was probably around 6 p.m. in the evening, late summer. It was like 80 degrees outside. The sun was still out and it was absolutely beautiful. Somehow there was a car that got into an accident with like a light pole and it flipped upside down. So like in this middle of this suburb neighborhood, there was a car, it was an SUV. It was completely flipped over with like the wheel still spinning. I don't know how fast they were going or what they had to do to get in that position, but like it happened. And that's not the first time I've seen a weird accident like that in Austin. Also, depending on the time of day, it can take a really long time to get somewhere. Let's say you have to travel like six miles, depending on where it is and what time of day, it can take you like eight minutes to go that six miles or it could take you 45 minutes. It just really depends. <laughs> The second reason not to move to Austin is that it gets hot as here. It is so hot. It can get up to like 100, 105. And then if you look at like the weather index, it'll say 105 feels like 115. It's ridiculous. It literally sometimes gets to the point where you just like open the front door and you're just like, attacked by a waft of really hot air. It feels like you open an oven that's baking cookies, except there's no cookie smell and there's no cookies. It's just really offensive, aggressive heat. And usually this heat will start probably from like July till August, September, October, sometimes to like mid October. I will say October till like spring of the next year, it's, it's really beautiful and it's really comfortable. People really love it. But when it's hot, it's really awful hot and our ACs are constantly running. Reason number three not to move to Austin is our super high property taxes. Compared to other states in the US, I think Texas has some of the highest property taxes in the country. I wanna say we are definitely like top five, if not top three. I don't know that for sure, so I'm making it up, but we're pretty high. So for instance, like in parts of California, I believe property taxes are right around the 1% mark. So 1% of the tax assessed value, which is, 
pretty reasonable. Again, my mom lives in Minnesota. I go back and forth all the time. And I think property taxes there are like one and a half percent of the assessed value. In Austin, property taxes are literally like two and a half percent. In some of the newer suburbs, they can be up to 3.2% of the assessed value. So let's say you have a $600,000 home in Minnesota and your property taxes are around 6,000 or maybe $8,000 a year. In Texas, that's gonna be closer to like 16 or $18,000 a year, which is a really big jump if you're financing a home that actually lowers your buying power significantly. Four piggybacks on our previous point about property taxes is our very competitive housing market. A lot of times I get clients that come here from out of state. I work with tons of folks from California and a lot of times they're like, oh, I can get a home that's like the same price in California, if not less expensive. But because our housing market is so competitive, a lot of times these homes will actually end up selling for significantly more than they are listed for. So let's say that you are shopping for a home that's listed at 1.2 million and there's like six offers on it, it's entirely possible that that home will sell for like 1.4, 1.5 million, which ends up being fairly comparable to prices in parts of California. I know that's not all of California, like in Beverly Hills, you could still expect to pay like 12 to $20 million for a house, right? So a $1.5 million house is like negligible, but still we have a very, very competitive housing market. And I work really hard with my clients to get them prepared and educated so they know what to expect and they can have the tools in place so that we can win our first or second offer. Typically my clients don't make seven offers and lose them all. If they take the time to listen, do their homework and we get prepared and take my advice, we can typically get a home in the first one or two tries. However, it does take a lot of prep and a lot of like mental strength to know that you are submitting an offer in a home that you will potentially not get and have that happen multiple times. It can be kind of heartbreaking and just, you have to be prepared and just kind of know like it may not happen right away. Number five, before I tell you this, please make sure to watch this video all the way to the end because the last point I'm gonna tell you about is something that I think is, is something that I really don't think enough people talk about and don't put any emphasis on and living here, it's something that I've seen happen over and over and I wish somebody would shed more light on this. So before I get to the last point, let me tell you about point number five. Point number five is, this is definitely my personal opinion and I'm sure there's a lot of people that would actually super disagree with me and, and that's fine, but I feel like we have a pretty small art scene. I really wish Austin had more arts. We are known for having lots of live music, which we do, but even in the last decade, I feel like that's gotten less and less. When I first came to Austin in 2009, I feel like you could literally go anywhere, kind of like in the evening, any sort of restaurant and find all sorts of live music. Now I feel like it's becoming more and more rare. Like you kind of have to like go look for it, like go on the restaurant's websites or bars websites or like go on what to do 512. There are a couple spots that still do consistently have live music like Guero's on South Congress, which is a Mexican food restaurant or Tex-Mex, I guess. And they oftentimes have live music. A central market in both like their, their central and their South location, a lot of times they'll have live music events and dancing and bands and stuff like that on the weekends and that's a lot of fun. Generally speaking though, we really, we have a very small handful of museums without actually like fact checking. I wanna say we have three museums and they're pretty small. We don't really have that many galleries. We have a, a couple. Our main theater place is the Zach Theater and then we have the Austin Ballet, which is good. I just, again, I grew up in Minneapolis and there was theater and orchestras and music and museums and galleries everywhere all the time. And if you're coming from a more artsy part of the country, like the North, um, obviously New York has massive museums, Houston even, Houston has tons of museums and the Houston Ballet is phenomenal. Like the level of like fine culture or arts just doesn't compare to what we have in Austin. And I think if, if Austin were to grow in any regard, it should definitely be in arts and culture. We have some, but holy moly, we are still lacking. Number six, thank you for watching all the way to the end of this video. I know you've been wanting to hear what I have to say about this last point. The final big reason not to move to Austin is something that people just do not talk about enough. And that is the fact that we have dogs and cats and pets literally everywhere in Austin. 
Everyone in Austin, it seems, has a dog. There are dog parks, there are restaurants where you can bring your dogs, you can bring your dogs into like a lot of retail stores. And I guess what I'm trying to get at is if you don't like joy, if you don't like love and happiness, don't move here because there are animals everywhere and they will give you their kisses and their love and they will bring you so much happiness. So if you don't like happiness, don't move to Austin. I feel like that's something people just don't talk about enough. And I just wanna be real with you and shed some light on the topic. So with that said, we also have a bunch of really wonderful animal shelters, which are so cool. My personal, 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 personal favorite. I'm so excited, I'm like blushing about it. Is the Austin Animal Center located on the east side of Austin off of Lavender Loop? Kind of a doozy to get there, but it's so worth it because it looks like a college campus. It's not, but it looks like a college campus and they are so well organized and it's such a well oiled machine. You can go in, look at the kitties. You can look in, go in and look at the little baby kittens. You can look at the dogs they're there to say hi to. You can go in and volunteer. You can take the puppies for a walk. I personally, I foster kittens, which is so rewarding and so super fun. They also have rabbits. Every now and then I'll get emails saying that they've got like ferrets that need to be adopted. And it's such a beautiful organization because people bring in animals that they find on the street that sometimes are injured or need some sort of rehabilitation and they will take care of the animal and nurse them back to health and then make sure that they get adopted into a good loving home. Austin has so many animals and it's so animal friendly that literally it brings so much joy to people. So many of my clients are millennials that have dogs or cats and they care more about their animals well-being and like providing a comfortable home for their their critter um, before like considering children into the picture and like I kind of love that. I think that's really fun. So if you don't like joy, don't move here. Anyway, those are my top reasons not to move to Austin. If you guys have comments or questions, please leave comments below. I really love hearing from you guys and I'm always open to new video suggestions. Anyway, I'm Daphne Quay, your boss lady realtor, and that's, that's all I got for you today. Till next time.